So I started to try to have like an outline for this episode, but it didn't really happen just because I had a very busy day of getting boosters and therapy sessions. So next time. But I thought about it, though, and I feel like that that's uh, it's a step in the right direction. That is a really good step in the right. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. <laughs> it is better than nothing. But I do know with every good intro. There is a beginning. And welcome to the Graphic Multiverse. I'm your host, Paul, joined with Chandler. Hello. And Angela. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> like now, I, wish I, do, I wish I could do like the throat singing. That <laughs> <laughs> okay, that, look, that scared the sh. Yeah, that was weird. I did not like that. I did not like that. Um, I loved it. Yeah. Some guttural th- singing. Oof, woof. Well, listen, get your moisture suits on. Make sure everything's zipped up because you don't want to get sand in all the wrong places. We're doing a deep dive into Arrakis, which I hear is lovely this time of the year. Uh, we are doing a Dune episode. Uh, yeah, so we're going to talk uh, about the movie from um, – I thought – I still don't know how to say this guy's name, but I'm going to try to say it the way the cast says it in all the documentaries I've watched. Uh, Denny Venehu. Okay. Okay. I, I, I thought his Jimmy name was Chalmay. Dennis. I was everyone, like, was, <laughs> everyone was just Denny. Like, oh, Denny. Denny's great. I'll work with Denny. Well, if he goes by Denny, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, we're going to explore the strangeness of uh, Frank Herbert's uh, franchise, um, books and movie, and everything in between so i'm excited for this episode Mm. um i am trying to remember the first time i ever heard of dune somebody actually bought it for me as a gift when i was like 10 and i was like i think paul will like this because it's Mm -hmm. a sci-fi book and the main character's name is paul i mean accurate It's, it's thoughtful yeah i i mean and i read it Really? Well, okay, okay. When I say Reddit, I feel like I understood about fifty percent of the concepts mm. um, because there's a lot wow. of words I didn't understand or even know how to pronounce. So it was like I felt my my eyes moving over the pages uh, uh, okay. until there weren't any. I was like fifty percent. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I was like, Dune is about sand. The first time I tried to read it, I was just like, "What is happening?" I was like, "Is this?" in English like I didn't know <laughs> what was going on and I, and I like I didn't make it very very far um and I remember trying to watch the um the like uh the film from the, oh god where are my words today David Lynch yeah the David Lynch film and wow I remember being so confused and disgusted <laughs> <laughs> and like I and I because I, I I remember growing up, you know, you know how like at the Sci Fi Channel would like have marathons of like Planet of the Apes or Tremors. like yeah or Tremors, and then they'd be like, oh, we're doing a special showing of Dune, and and Dune was something that everybody talked about. Like Sting was in it, and it's like, oh, it's Dune, it's like this epic thing. And every time I tried to like watch it, I was like, I don't get it i don't i was like i can't i would start it and i'd be like yeah this is this is gobbledygook to me mm-hmm. and i would back out what about you um i actually have no real experience with it i mean i remember like as a kid it being advertised on the sci-fi channel but like, i never actually yeah. watched it and i so I'm kind of you know flying blind here but well and i, I like, remember they did like the mini series too in the early mm-hmm. 2000s being like oh and i i remember thinking maybe this time <laughs> I'll actually be able to follow what's going on. And I didn't. I didn't even try. I was like, oh, I can watch it. But then I thought of like 12 other things I'd rather do. And that's what I did. I actually liked the Dune miniseries. I remember like watching on the sci fi channels. It was around like Christmas, I think, of like 2021, 22. Not 22, 2002. Sorry. Uh, and uh, I remember liking it because I think I thought for like a made for TV miniseries it wasn't bad like I, especially because i love how it, in the production they just got like they would rent out this like sound stage and they just would like get like a massive like panoramic picture of like a desert and they would just kind of like build sets in front of that which i thought was kind of 
kind of clever. And, and again, you know, this is God almost twenty years ago, um, and uh, so I remember, I remember liking it. I the, the the David Lynch thing. I mean, that was that was tough. I think even David Lynch has distanced himself from that movie. You I, just can't do Dune in one movie. I mean, and I think like the older I got, the more I could appreciate the David Lynch film. That's good. For, I can. No, I mean, I could appreciate it for the camp of it and like just the, the sheer like cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs that it was. And I, I think that like, you know, being a weirdo and being like super into like queer culture and camp and like all that stuff. Like I think that kind of had like a special place like in just the the on the shelf of just like what the fuck you know what i mean (laughs) sure sure (laughs) you know it's like it's i mean because we can all think of those films that were just like what like that movie is bananas but you know we still love it or it's like oh my god yeah finally a callback from like episodes episodes ago there's a movie i couldn't remember what the title was i Figured it out finally. What it's it? called Virtuosity. Ooh. Mm. Sounds mm. 90s. It does. Yeah, it has does. Uh, Den- Denzel Washington and uh, I believe Kurt Russell. And yeah. Wow. What was that about? Um, it's about like um, some like serial killer. Um, let me actually read the synopsis here. Um, a former cop who has been in prison for murdering the psychopath who killed his family, Parker Barnes, Denzel Washington, is recruited to test out a new virtual reality program where the goal is to apprehend a computer-generated being called SID 6.7, Russell Crowe, not not the other guy, who has been modeled on hundreds of deranged criminals. When what? SID manages to escape into the real world, Barnes must capture or destroy him before the soul sense he can go on a killing spree. How? How does he make it to the real world? I don't remember, but I know he eats glass to sustain, him, sustain himself. Wow. Like... <laughs> shit like that you know what mm. i mean like things that like really like lex do you remember the show lex i vaguely that show when i talk about it it's like i'm it's like a fever dream i'm describing because it's like <laughs> a, a it was a like a criminal who's turned into a sex slave and then she like escapes with like a weird like a like goth assassin guy and like they go and get on a spaceship, but the spaceship's in love with her. It's like the and the spaceship's <laughs> oh, like a giant like that's bug. An anime. <laughs> that was sci-fi too, wasn't it? Yeah, the spaceship's like a giant bug. Oh god! It was yeah, but like things that you you describe it and you're like, what? That can't be real. But then you're like, oh no, it was. It's like it's like yeah, like Twin Peaks. Mm. Twin also Peaks. David Lynch. Also David Lynch, you know, and it's just. Yeah, it's just it's just it just there. it, was it just is like to me as a kid, I was like, oh, you know, Dune was right up there with like pink flamingos, you know, not everybody saw it, but everybody who did like you were in this special club <laughs> or forever changed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <they're, laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I didn't really have that with Dune. I think, like I said, I mean, my my, my like the book was my introduction to it, um, and then and I didn't know what the movie was. I just remember, you know, Baron Harkonnen looking like a like a like a rotted tomato. He's yeah. just like big, <laughs> round, red, and with weird pimples. Like he and just, just licking like his lips a lot. Yeah, it's very uncomfortable. Yeah, Oy. yeah. But you know, Dune is kind of like. Um, I think it kind of has a similar journey, like the way the Maltese Falcon did, where it was a book first. Um, and there were three iterations or like three adaptions of, of the book. And the third one is the one that like hit the nail on the head. And that's the one everyone knows because it has, mm. um, Humphrey Bogart, mm. uh, Sydney Greenstreet, uh, and, um, so yeah. And that's kind of how it is with the, with the Denny Benet who, uh, cause you had like, you know, you had David Lynch, you had the TV show. Now you get this one and this feels, um, you know, with a way better budget and advanced technology. That's yes. true. That's true. <laughs> yeah, I think, of, and I think, and not a madman directing it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, someone <Not> medicated. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I was excited when I heard that he was going to be directing Doom because I loved Blade Runner twenty forty nine. Mm. Yeah, and Arrival. So it's like we know he's got a mm. he's got a good handle on science fiction, and um, I also like that. 
in order for him to do this, he's like, I got to do it in at least in two parts because there's no way I'm doing this as one movie. Yeah, that was definitely a good move. Um, but if, if we can just jump right in. Mm-hmm. Um, Let's do it. The thing, like, I loved this movie. Mm-hmm. I I saw it twice. Wow. Um, did you already buy it? Uh, no, but I intend to. Okay, yeah, because I'm going to probably watch it again because mm-hmm. this movie was so just breathtaking mm-hmm. and it was so well cast and just well executed. This movie was so good that I made a real attempt at getting through the book and I wow. knew that reading it wasn't still wasn't going to happen, but I did like the full cast like audible Mm-hmm. And I and the audiobook and it like I listened to that um at work uh and because I dog groom so I can like listen to stuff, but like mm-hmm. it took me four days to get through Whoa, it. Oh, that's because dense. Y- it, yeah, dense, but also kind of impressive that you did that in four days. I did do it in four days, but like I remember like three days after at the three day mark being like, wow, I still I'm on chapter like, like I'm on chapter, I don't know, like. 40 and I still have like nine hours left. Like I, I, it is such, it it is, it is a freaking tome, you know? Wow. Yeah. But yeah, the book of a series, the movie was so good. It made me want to get into the, to the, to actually read the book. And I did. And I, I appreciated it. And I, I got it for the first time in my 36 years of existence (laughs) with, in a world with Dune, I finally understood and got nice. got it. Well, for a lot of people, I mean, they consider that like the science fiction novel. Yes. Like, I okay. mean, that's that's up there with like um, 2001 A Space Odyssey or, um, you know, um, the Foundation series by Asimov. I mean, people think that that's like the, the greatest um, mm-hmm. science fiction. And, I mean, um, it, it's funny when you – I mean, when you see um, – things that came from dune like you look at star wars and it's like hard to not see well yeah because didn't he read dune and then turn around and make star wars <laughs> i'll do this but better in my um, head <laughs> i mean like you think about the the uh the benny jesuits and like the the jedi or yeah. you know yeah, they're just, essentially jedi yeah <laughs> they're based they are jedi but just you know the jedi are mostly men i do mm-hmm. like the idea of, of this like this kind of like holy secret order of badass women of like mm-hmm. witches yeah <laughs> well see dune dune kind of hits on the things that made me like dark tower is that like it's kind of mm-hmm. having these weird things crammed together you know like like a gunslinger looking for a wizard you know and having like space witches yeah mm-hmm. you know that that are trying to like engineer like you know the perfect being that can bridge space and time you know like it's yeah it's just cool it's, it's like the concepts alone i think are just uh great um, um i will say like um he, you mentioned that it, it might be he, at least two parts i kind of feel like i it should probably be more just because i didn't really as much as i loved the first movie i just didn't really feel like there was a lot of like content or like plot progression it was just a lot of like laying down the pieces and the characters which obviously the first movie should do but like it didn't really feel like anything happened it was just like here right here's the main character this is what he goes through he has suffers losses and like at near the end it's like this is my intent and like that's kind of it <laughs> so it was like all right but. well they and they did i think a lot like my first viewing of the film mm-hmm. um was before i had done i had i had done the audible mm-hmm. and then my second viewing of the film with what i knew from the book Mm-hmm. was a very different experience and i really appreciate the subtlety and the mm-hmm. things that they got through without mm-hmm. having to just like hold the audience's hand and explain like mm-hmm. david lynch did yeah okay. and they just didn't like cram it in there you know like it like okay. it, it was i think i think the pacing of it's really good it's kind of like marinate you kind of letting the plot really kind of marinate in there okay that's fair. Uh, I was kind of like, I wish there was like your more. Point, though. Like, if you don't know anything yeah. about Dune, it's like, okay, yeah. so, so it's, it's about, it's like the diary of, a, the diary of a wimpy kid. Yes, you know, uh, no. he moves to a new neighborhood. <laughs> uh, you know, there's like a girl that he likes, but he hasn't technically met her yet. Get the bullied. Uh, yeah, you know, and uh, yeah, he's a new kid at school, and. You know. 
trying to get his driver's license. I mean, in a, in a sense, I mean, you're absolutely right. It is like a, you know. Well, yeah, Paul Atreides is 15 years old. I mean, he he is a kid. He's the kid who just goes, he's the new kid in town. Yeah. You know, and, but like, he's kind of coming into this like situation that is so thoroughly like screwed up and his dad is actually like trying to navigate it and his dad mm-hmm. like kind of grew up in this environment where everyone was always trying to kill him all the time so mm-hmm. he's just like yeah you know it's tuesday <laughs> and, and i mean he's like are we gonna get through this like you you're basically being set up for failure and his dad's just like yeah but you know he's so used to it that it's like yeah, yeah. and we're gonna dance. navigate it and i have yeah. my my plan to 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 get over on the emperor and um and ultimately we just like watch that fail Mm -hmm. in the first movie and and it's so it's so visually beautiful it is it's 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 such a good movie to to watch you would think about a movie set on a fucking sand planet would be like kind of boring to look at it's not like it's just so so well done and the cast is mystery yeah Yeah. um no and and dune dune kind of i mean was it like 64 like came out and i and uh i think i feel like dune is hard not to like because it has like you know i mean like this this could have easily been set in like medieval times with a story mm-hmm. of you know like if like a family being betrayed you know an exiled son you know uh gaining this power you know coming back a man with this like new heightened power like it it, it it has all the story beats that I, that I love probably because a lot of the story beats came from dune and you know and, and dune is kind of like a, a good example of like the hero's journey oh yeah absolutely um, and it's it, it i think it's unfortunate um and this is kind of going into like spoiler real spoiler territory so like if you are unfamiliar with Dune or don't want to know get or out. get out now because I'm about get to drop out. some some things that might ruin this for everyone. Um, so the the thing about it is that 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 Dune is the only book that really follows <laughs> the hero's journey and everything we get after that first book is just bananas it just goes off the rails into like i i'm i'm not going to read the other books i know i'm not going to but i think for dune for what it is i think it's it is i i I agree that it is brilliant that it is awesome but i think everything that kind of comes after it is just woof well yeah i mean you have people turning into like sandworms and all kinds of weird shit like oh my god i i can't i i don't even know where to start like (laughs) these bananas yeah uh, yeah uh, i think and the thing that would do if you you like it cool i i just i just i I don't know if i can follow through i feel like with dune too it's like um it kind of has that same thing that like uh, I think Watchmen has where it's like, oh my God, at the time this came out, it was like groundbreaking and amazing. Mm-hmm. But now you're just kind of like, okay, you know, and I, I feel that way a lot about the book. Yeah. Like at the time it was just like, holy shit, you know, but n- it, like looking at it now, you're just like, yeah. Yeah. I think that's the, the kind of the, <laughs> like the problem sometimes when, when you like break the mold at the time it happens, it's incredible. But then when, when the mold is broken and then a new mold is set, you know, it's like, it's okay. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's cool. cool. I think that's why it's um, great to see it as it's presented now, uh, because it kind of feels like the mold is kind of being broken again in, in a, in a sense, because, it is. because now we were in a place where we can do Dune justice and mm. also, too, the great thing about the, the at least the first book is um, it's so timely right now. Yes. I think just, you know, just with, uh, you know, I mean, uh, it's I mean, corruption. It, it it's corruption. Like- it's, you know, it's, uh, you know, fighting for the survival of a planet and, you know, that's being, you know, just, you know, being used for its resources and 
you know? Yeah. Pretty soon Earth will be Arrakis if we don't stop global warming. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Thanks for listening. <laughs> no. So Chandler, like, mm-hmm. what do you have any like crazy questions or like? Um, well, I guess just like it? things that I noticed. Um, like, oh my god, my um. So it looks like there's like these like these um sort of like vizier kind of characters, like the black guy with like his like um, it does calculations in his head. Kind of like a computer. Oh yes, um, yes. So it kind of makes you wonder, like, where are the actual computers? Because you're clearly like you're kind of like in like the future, and there's technology. Good question. But that you don't see any like question. real like you know, operating. So, like, well, I guess the other thing was like there's like a lot of like anachronistic technology. So you have like this like in the beginning, there's that like free floating lamp that's like super advanced, and then you get into like side like the dragonfly plane, and it's like a you know analog cockpit, and it's yeah. like that's very like so it's like what. Why are there? Where is I expect more like computers and digital interfaces, but um, to be found. Yeah. So okay. So I'm going to answer this for you. Sure. And that's a great observation, by that the way. That is Chandler. a great Thanks. observation because that is don't there, see it in. There is a point to it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. So basically, where the guy like kind of like flipped his eyes back and was like a human, he basically has been trained to be a human computer like okay. that's pretty much exactly what um and there's a word for them Ugh. nerds <laughs> yeah uh Thufir Hawat. he's oh gosh um was it fair few at Oshpagosh Oshpagosh mm-hmm. yeah um yeah but basically there are these types of um, there are these people who have been trained to do quick calculations like like they they kind of go into like into like I don't know collective consciousness and can retrieve this data because mm-hmm. there was something that happened thousands of years ago called the Butlerian Jihad and it was basically like the the like the, the the war against the machines and oh. it was like we had computers we had ai and there was this huge war between humans and the machines and the humans won and we're like okay we can't do this again and so mm-hmm. everything's analog and so they mm-hmm. have so this is what what we would call like like soft sci-fi because there is no like ad- really advanced technology. I mean, there yeah. is, but it's like it, they call them thinking machines, and they're mm-hmm. forbidden. Mm-hmm. And Actually, it's, it's kind of funny when you hear people call doing hard sci-fi. It's like, uh, yeah. <laughs> really, yeah. Um, okay, yeah. that's good to know. Yeah. So, so they like so yeah. This Butlerian Jihad happened, and um, and people became like really specialized in certain things and so you have these guys who are like human thinking machines and then you have the Betty Jesuit who um kind of came out of like I guess this this patriarchal society that like kind of ruined life and humanity and all this stuff and so they pretty much act as like like Jedi and they're, but they're all like women and they are pretty much playing God and they're trying to like create, they are trying to actually, actually create like the perfect, like person based off of like bloodlines who can do what they do. Um, but who is also male. Cause like they're women and they can like, I don't know. They, they, they get they their periods. <laughs> They, they, they can tap into their, their universal consciousness as well. It's just, it's crazy. And, um, well, and also too, isn't, isn't the, um, like the spice on Dune, that's kind of how people can do all of these quick thinking well, that's calculations more, and the, like the navigators, the navigator, the spice is more so for the navigators. Uh, okay. The navigators are what make like interstellar travel happen, like because these are actual navigators, like actual people, but they they're not really people anymore. They're like these weird like mutants. Oh, that are addicted to spice. Yeah, we didn't see them in this movie. Yeah, we'll but, probably uh, see them in the next one. 
But you can see them in the David Lynch one and in the sci-fi uh, miniseries. <laughs> and uh, wah, wah, wee, wah. <laughs> yes. Kind of like Modoc looking oh, things. Okay. Um, but yeah, but I mean, but that's... Uh, Mentat. That's the what Mentat. they're called. Sorry, the Mentat. That's what the, the thinking, the people who... Can, can do the quick calculations. Can think fast. <laughs> think real good yeah but they they think real good and they also act as like kind of like advisors or like assassins to like if they're assigned to a certain house and they are good mentats and then there are bad mentats and like oh. that are that are trained to do devious shit and there's a mentat that harkonnen has um who we see in the first mo- movie although he's not really given kind of the the yeah breath that he's given in the book right and harkonnen you know is kind of like i guess if you had to break it down in simplest form you know atreides the good guys harkonnen's the bad guys and mm-hmm. so the kind of basic i get the starting point for dune is that you know the harkonnen's they've been mining the spice on dune for like what like 80 years yeah and then the emperor is like you know house atreides so good Love them to pieces. <laughs> We're gonna let them run the, um, you know, run the mining of spice because the spice must flow on Dune. <laughs> and uh, but meanwhile, deep down behind the scenes, the Emperor is like, "Yo, about this Atreides guy. He thinks he's so cool because he's got a cool beard and, and everybody cool, loves him and a cool army and everyone loves him." <laughs> so the, yeah, so it, it, I mean, he's setting him up to fail to like yeah. wipe out the house of trees. Well, because what he the the actual plan is is that he's gonna get um, the he's giving Dune to the Atreides family or to House Atreides, and basically it's gonna fail. And what he wants to do is base it like so. The Harkonnen. Vladimir Harkonnen and his family who used to run it are going to sabotage them and like stage a coup and kill all the Atreides and the emperor can like kind of stand back and be like, Oh, it was like an inner house kind of squabble, but Mm -hmm. really he's trying to get rid of his biggest competitor Mm -hmm. um, because house Atreides is starting to rival his power. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, so, and, and everyone knows it, everyone Mm -hmm. knows it, but they can't just come out and like say it because then you're like accusing the emperor of like shady shit. And that's just, mm-hmm. you don't, you know, you can't really do that without being able to back it up, especially if he's like crossed all of his T's and dotted his eyes to make it look like the Harkonnens are. I mean, yeah. I mean, really dirty politics, not trusting your leaders. I mean, talking about science fiction. <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So Leto um, of the ruler of House Atreides, like, is very much aware of this whole system, but he has his own plan. And he's like, I, okay, so they've been running, like, spice off of Arrakis for however, how long? And there's these natives that live in Arrakis that they have been, like, discounting for ever they think that they're they're stupid and they can't do anything but he's like i know they're real solid awesome warriors and if i can get them on my side when the harkonnens like try to take over to take um, arrakis back i'm gonna be able to like fight them off because i'm gonna have this army of like badass like dune people like who already hate the harkonnens Mm -hmm. so so that's his whole thing. It's like, he's like, I got to get in with these guys. They have their own customs. And so he sends his buddy, um, Duncan Idaho, the names of this, the names are amazing. <laughs> Duncan Idaho goes AKA to Aquaman. Aquaman. AKA, AKA, thank you for the fish. Thank you for the fish. <laughs> goes and is like, tries to basically learn their ways and get in on their good side and tries to kind of build that bridge between House Atreides and, um, yeah. He sent the one dark guy. <laughs> well, yeah. the darkest of the group. <laughs> well, okay. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was, They're called like, yeah, the free, the Freeman, the, uh, the Fremen, excuse me, the Fremen. I keep calling them Freeman. Because I keep calling them the Freemasons. The Freemasons, the Fremen. Yeah. <laughs> 
I think what's really what kind of made me nervous about Dune was that um, I was afraid that it was going to go into like white savior territory because it's kind of like mm. you know dances with wolves, mm. Avatar, um, but um, I guess and again spoiler alert only white person on this episode, um, mm. but uh, I thought it didn't really feel that way with the book as well as the movie i think because of all of the backstory going into it yes. you know the fact that he had been i mean he's I been engineered for this like it's well casting is everything too yeah. and basically so paul our main character is yeah you no <laughs> 15 year old paul okay we know he is the heir to house atreides he's leto's only son and his mother is Leto's concubine, not his wife, his concubine, but she's his main squeeze, meaning <laughs> his only squeeze. He doesn't have like any other squeeze. He loves Jessica. Yeah. Like she's it. But they they do the whole concubine thing because just in case he has a potential like he could get a potential marriage that mm-hmm. could be more beneficial for a trainees in power. But he doesn't need it. He loves Jessica and he's just happy he's got a son. Whatever. But Jessica is playing a very different game. So the Benny Jesseret sent her to be his main squeeze. And to like, she's like, okay, they're like, okay, you got to have his kid. And, but they told her to have a girl. And the Benny Jesseret are like super, like, like, they, they, they like can meditate into their like own beings and they can control their, like, how their bodies like produce, like, certain like the, hormones yeah, they and can they basically can, like choose what the sex of their own kid they can choose mm-hmm. the sex of their own kid they can choose they they're like crazy like it's like y- you think about those like crazy white guys in like russia who are just like oh i'm gonna swim in like ice water and i'm totally fine because it's like mind over matter it's like that but times mm-hmm. a million and it can actually do it <laughs> yeah <laughs> so so there, everything is very, very controlled. But she was like, I am going to try to make, like, the, the like, our, our special guy. What was he called? Space Jesus. Space Jesus, basically. Oh, yeah, the, the, the Quizar. The Quizak Hatterack. The Quizak Hatterack. And give a dog a bone. Get, but but <laughs> the, the Benny Gesserit have been, like, they're trying to make the Quizak Hatterack, but, like, they're like, yeah, he's he's a ways off, and we don't want to do this too soon because he mm. might not. Because we every time we try to get this guy to like mm. be one of us, he can't take it. He goes like a little too far and like dies in the process of trying to like take on our mental prowess. Like mm. he can't like upload himself to like the Matrix, the the hive mind. I guess yeah. Mm. So they're trying to do this, but Jessica is just like fuck it. I'm going to do it. And so she's like training. She's <laughs> a plus. So she, yeah. So she's training Paul to be the Kwisak Haderach. He doesn't know this. He just thinks he's getting special buddy Jesuit training. Cause his mom's just sly like that. And, mm. but she's playing a different game. And then he, with the whole opening sequence with the gong Jabbar and like the test and all of that stuff with the high priestess, who is basically my, aging goals i just want to (laughs) like i want to walk around with like a veil hat like a haunted (laughs) i love that name too gong jabbar that should be one of our kids names and just have like a needle like a poisoned needle on my fingernail just like uh, (laughs) like yeah like i just want to like yeah i want to that's like my goal that's who Mm. i want to be i Um, want this for you (laughs) i thank you thank you i'm glad you like appreciate the vision vision yeah (laughs) I mean, that just kind of seems like the only way to live. Um, I want to be a giant sandworm. But yeah, so she gives him the Benny Gesserit che- a, a chest? Test. Give me that chest, girl. <laughs> she gives him the Benny Gesserit test, and he passes it. And she's like, well, Jessica, I hope you're happy. We'll see <laughs> where this goes. don't have to goes. kill him. <laughs> she's like, You'll, we'll see where this goes, because, mm-hmm. you know, you guys are in for a world of hurt on this planet and um you know there's nothing we can do for the father but you know the path has been set good luck you'll need it 
And <laughs> Jessica's like, sweet. Oh, no. What have I done? And um, <laughs> she was crying a lot in that movie. She was. She was I really, mean, there's a lot going on. She was really panicked in the movie. Um, she's a little cooler uh, in the book. But um, but yeah, so she has this whole thing. And so when they get to like the planet, they get to um, what I can't remember any of the names. Arrakis. Arrakis. Arrakis thank you. Jessica is like, OK, so the Benny Gesserit have been here. And they've been planting seeds and like making up their own like messiah. Um, and that that they're like, oh, you know, so every so because they keep oh, fuck. <laughs> no, it's just so much. It is okay. so much. It's so much. Yeah. Like I overwhelmed myself. This is why it, this is why it can't be one movie. Yeah. Yep. So okay. <laughs> so all right, so they get on the planet, and like they people keep calling him like this, like like Messiah, basically. And he's just like, "Why?" And she's like, "Well, the Benny Gesserit have been here, and they've planted a seed just in case a Benny Gesserit and her son should show up. So they're so it's like a, a form of protection." Mm-hmm. Um, and she, but she doesn't know like specifically what was said or what because this happened like hundreds of years ago and mm. it's like a game of telephone and so she's just like i'm just gonna go with it this is the path that's been set for us so we'll see where it goes and so she is hopeful that he is the Quizak cataract but in terms of like the belief system on arrakis she's very cynical she's like the benny jesuit probably just made some shit up and mm-hmm. if we fit the role then they'll you know hopefully be do us a solid and help us out because they think we'll not murder us <laughs> they'll think we're like gods or something so let's mm-hmm. just like go with it um and you know they all kind of play their cards right and um long story short uh yeah paul finds out that he is in fact the quizak Hatterack. And the spice now that he is like bombarded with it like living on this planet it kind of like acts as like a hallucinogen and it like he all of his senses are heightened and he starts getting visions of like possible futures and he's like shit i am the quizak (laughs) cataract and i am the messiah that they think i am like i am all of these things and he's pissed because he's like god damn it i'm 15 this is a lot and he gets mad at her because he's like you fucking did this to me and um and, he's, and he doesn't know like how because he's basically seeing time and um all at once and he doesn't know how to like kind of sift through it to be like okay is this a possible future is this actually gonna happen he, like mm-hmm. he doesn't know he's just getting visions of shit so it's a lot and um so that's why in the movie when we see um the the dude that he fights um mm-hmm. we see him in these visions like he's like, I'm like a gonna mentor t- yeah as a mentor and like i'm gonna teach you the way and in a sense he is that but like it's not how he initially saw it so mm-hmm. so paul is learning how to see he's learning his visions and all of this stuff and his possible futures and yeah he's so he can't like see the future but he can and it's just it's it's a hot mess but it's a great hot mess. It's a though. great hot mess. And I am so excited for the next movie because they are, they've already planted, well, they, they planted the scene, want, want, for my favorite character, which is Aaliyah, his little sister, that oh. his mom is pregnant with right now. Right now. Uh, so right I'm, <laughs> I'm so excited for her because she is like this blue eyed village of the damned fucking <laughs> chick who is just freaks everybody out. It's awesome. I'm so excited. Is she, is she nice though? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, she's not. She, yeah. Like, okay. Little spoiler. Are you okay with a little bit of spoiler? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So where they're at the end of the movie, when they're like kind of walking to the, to their like hideout, mm-hmm. Jessica is like the only Benny Gesserit that they like have on this planet. Well, that she knows of. She's about to meet there. They do have one there and she's a high priestess, but she's old as shit. Mm -hmm. And 
Jessica is going to have to take her place. And so Jessica is going to like have to come to terms with like, oh, shit, we're not leaving this place. Like we're yeah. here now. <laughs> this is going to be my life now. And so she has to do this like test to like become a high priestess herself. And she has to drink this like poison water and um, go into like this deep hallucination and like connect to like the Benny Gesserit like hive mind and like the consciousness of all the high priestesses like before her and mm-hmm. take on their like memories and stuff. Mm-hmm. But she doesn't tell him that she's pregnant and they find out because the consciousness of her unborn daughter is kind of like, oh, hey, what's going on here? Oh, shit. And so she has to, like, soothe the consciousness of her unborn daughter who's, like, receiving this super upload Mm -hmm. and it isn't supposed to be there. And Mm -hmm. everyone's like, shit, you should have told us because this is this is bad. We might make an abomination. And she's like, "Uh," you know, and then later, you know, Aaliyah is born, but Aaliyah is born with the knowledge of her mother and the Benny Gesserit high priestesses before Whoa. her. So she's, like she's the avatar. <laughs> yeah. But here's the thing though. Like the, uh, an abomination is like when like one of those past memories kind of like takes over and mm. like possesses them. So every, so she, so she's like still herself and she hasn't been like taken over anything, but she has that potential to be like an abomination because she is this kid that has the knowledge of tons of lives before her. And yeah, but she's fucking awesome. <laughs> she's a Whoa. creep. That's awesome. And she no, freaks she's... everybody out. <laughs> like none like, of the she kids. She can turn us at any time. <laughs> she's like, none of the kids want to hang out with her. <laughs> she's like a creepy adult, like in like a toddler's body. It's fucking awesome. No, that's pretty cool. I love her. I love her. And I cannot wait. Yeah. I'm excited now. Thank you. Yeah. Aaliyah is like the best. She's got like a small role, but man, oh man, is it like my favorite. Yeah. Now, the the ending of Dune is super satisfying. It's actually almost kind of like the ending I wish Game of Thrones had. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, but no, I mean, it's um, yeah, I mean, it's space Game of Thrones. It is actually in a sense. It's kind of like. Yeah, no, that's exactly kind of yeah, like what it is. families, yeah. intrigue, politics. I, and I wouldn't be surprised if George R. R. Martin didn't get some inspiration from Dune. I mean, yeah. I, and I can't, I keep going back to the um, the Barsoom series, um, which I think is like the original, original, like groundbreaking sci-fi series. Uh, uh, Princess of Mars, John Carter. Mm-hmm. Oh, 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 yes. Like that, because that, came, know, like, out, like, that came out in like the <laughs> 30s yeah so mm-hmm. that was like dope um but yeah i i, I think People that had imaginations back then yeah i think there's like a mix between like that and dune yeah that kind of uh, you know affect everything it's, well, it's just it's 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 a cool concept there's so many like amazing groundbreaking concepts but like man oh man like dune messiah starts to go off the rails but like god yeah, emperor I, of dune is well, just cuckoo for coco puffs yeah. i mean children of dune is like already like wild as hell but like god emperor of dune is just like oh. that's a that's a big worm with a human face and little baby arms oh god it's, yeah it's so this like spans like generations or like um it's like, yes okay yes cool but I, yes. I did. I did want to talk a little bit about the cast, though, because when I was uh, bringing up, um, you know, Paul Atreides, you know, and and the possible, you know, white savior trope, you had mentioned that it, that casting plays a role in that too. Yes, because in the David Lynch version, um, everybody's white. Um, even the the Fremen are white. Um, everybody's like kind of white, but it's obvious that like the Fremen are kind of like an allegory for like. I don't know, like Middle Easterners and like, it's like a, it's a a weird thing. I mean, even like the language, I mean, you kind of get that feeling in the books. I mean, with the, the, 
the way their language is and stuff like that. I mean, like they that. use the word jihad, so. Yeah, jihad is, <laughs> is pretty big and, yeah, um, Muad'Dib and all of that stuff. So, like, um, so, I mean, yeah, it's, it's easy to kind of get into that, like, white savior, like, idea. But I think what's really cool about the books is, like, no, Leto, I mean, is pretty much, like, Paul's dad is described in the books how he looks in the movie. I mean, they. it, it would have been nice if Frank Herbert, like, actually had, like, this, like, hot Oscar Isaac-looking motherfucker with, like, <laughs> salt and pepper hair, like, I, if he had described it like that. But, I mean, might as well have. I mean, because that's, I mean, you see this guy that's, like, olive-skinned and, mm. and, yeah. And so, I mean, but... Beyond that, nobody like el- nobody else's skin color is really described. Yeah, sorry, that's our dog. Sorry, that's my radiator. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, I mean, and I think the casting in this film they really uh, did a, a really good ser- uh, service and and kind of imagining a future where you know if everybody's got this interstellar travel like humanity is going to be a lot more diverse and i think that shows and still yeah. no wi-fi still no wi-fi still no wi-fi. um no but the casting is great though i i did want to talk about i uh, was at um stellan skarsgård who plays baron harkonnen he's just magnificent <sighs> and terrifying in this so movie. scary especially mm-hmm. when he when he rises up mm-hmm. he's like my, my dude <laughs> fucking living for that uh and i'm excited to see more harkonnen stuff happening uh in the sequel dave bautista i thought was great mm. as his um his nephew yeah i'm excited to see who's gonna play his other nephew the oh. the, the, the sting mm. part yeah oh. yeah um the real <laughs> anti paul mm. and the cool okay it's not cool but it's like it adds a little bit of flavor but in the books baron baron harkonnen is like a total pedophile and he Ooh. has the hots for paul oh and God. his nephew not oh not batista but the other one just to kind of make it extra just icky yeah, but, 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 i was about to say yeah. the flavor it adds isn't tasty it's, it's not, not good <laughs> flavor it's like oh you don't really nah, no no this is a. Uh, he likes icky. his twinks. It's <laughs> yeah, icky. it's it's very icky, and I'm just like, yeah, like I was, yeah, I was like grooming dogs, just verbally, just yeah. Mm-hmm. It was, but I, uh, I okay, yeah, they really, they get, they, they, they don't want they, it lost on you that he's the bad guy. They, they lean in, and I was like, mm-hmm. oh man, there's so much like pedophilia. It's yeah. crazy. Um, like. Oh my god, like it's at one point his nephew, the hot one that we haven't met yet, tries to assassinate his uncle with a boy that looks like Paul Atreides. Paul by putting like a poison like needle in like his inner thigh next to his junk, thinking that like his uncle will like be all like gropey gropey and like get poisoned but like the baron finds out and like kills the boy and then like nephew i'm so disappointed basically goes to his nephew he's like i'm disappointed i'm gonna kill all your slaves and then Mm. like but i can't kill you because i kind of need you yeah i can't kill you because you're my heir (laughs) like (laughs) it's fucking crazy yeah it that's uh it's, it's it's bananas yeah. So I love it. I think it's <laughs> so of course poison I love thighs. It. I love it. I like this. Is great. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's uh, it's interesting, and there's a little bit of that in the Sci-Fi Channel version, but they're not like yeah. kids. And he's definitely homosexual, but not yeah. like like all of his like his like slaves like boy toys are like you know just, just like changing flowers and <laughs> vases. It's like God. weird. A harem. <laughs> it's a harem. <laughs> It's gross. Yeah, I just want to say like the end of the beginning when um when they're rolling not in the beginning but when they're on planet Arrakis and like um Paul is like you know doing his social studies assignment and that little like killer bee thing comes in mm. that was super scary. Yeah. Oh yeah, the hunter seeker. <laughs> the hunter seeker. Yeah. yeah, and the dude's been fucking living in the wall, like yeah, that operating shit was scary. it. 
That was, yeah, that was nuts. Um, I also like to, I mean, I don't know. I, it's just cool. I, I, I mean, it's like, I mean, I, I know not only a groundbreaking thought, but I just, I just love how it's all set up, but it's not so much like lasers. You know, like I love that there's still like swords and blades and stuff like that. Like it's for something that's science fiction, it feels pretty grounded. Oh yeah. Oh um, yeah. And I, yeah, I think like most great sci-fi, it's because, you know, Frank Herbert had it really well thought out. Mm-hmm. And then just like, just like the history. Yes. How the world works, how their economy works. And if you ever want to hear like a really in-depth, like deep dive into Dune, I highly, highly recommend um, the last podcast on the left uh, Dune Deep Dive with Henry Zabrowski. They oh. it's a limited amount of episodes. I think there's only like twelve or thirteen episodes. But like, I I think it's like having these two comedians break it down is like so much more like ingestible like mm-hmm. <laughs> than not because it kind of explains like what happens. But they're also like huge fans. Yeah, so it's super like fans. there's a there's a lot of love that goes into it as well. But I think they they break it down in the most entertaining way humanly possible that does like isn't gonna give you a, a headache like like me. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, no, I thought you did pretty well. Don't, Thank don't, you. Don't count yourself Thank out. you. It was hard. <laughs> yeah. It's so funny because I don't think it, I, I because it was just kind of a whim. I was like, can we watch Dune before it's not yeah. on HBO anymore? And you're like, fine. And then we were both just like in it to win it. <laughs> and then yeah. the next day, I'm just like, okay, so this is what's going on. <laughs> like, oh my yeah, Anna did a super deep dive. <laughs> I did. I just like got really into Dune. And then really out of Dune when I found out what else was happening in the books. I, I was mean, like, oh no. The great thing about Dune though. <laughs> I feel like Dune is like you can read Dune, and, and and I feel you would be satisfied. Yes, like you could stop there if yes. you if you wanted to keep reading, and if you like those books, cool. I mean, I mean, I don't want to like bash anybody for for liking the 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 uh, the uh, the sequels, but yeah. But I think I think I think if the movies go, I think if they just do this one, we're good. We're good. I mean, I believe that this director could pull off Dune Messiah and make it an enjoyable experience. I'm sure he could. I don't know if anybody could take Children of Dune and make it an enjoyable experience. I don't know. You have to probably edit the hell out of it. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Creative I, license. Yeah. It, it's, I mean, woof. It's like, it's so wacky. <laughs> it's just wacky to put it to put it politely how so it is in a wack. non-spoilery way uh there is no non-spoilery way but i could say that okay. leto okay do giant worm and baby arms like that? the, no that's that's in <laughs> dune that, though you get the start of it in children of dune where he like covers himself in these like little baby worms oh and that's a james mcavoy part in, yeah because yeah there's a they did a, 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 a so sci-fi j- sequel yeah so mm-hmm. he plays leto too Literally, Cruise that's control. his fucking name, Lado Two Electric Boogaloo, and wow. he is eight years old, and he covers mm-hmm. himself in like worms, and then mm-hmm. it's like you know kid stuff, and you know, and and he's like trying to he like manipulates them to like become part of his body, and so he's like slip and sliding through the desert. <laughs> wow. With weird worm bodies, and then he eventually becomes the giant, wow. like, quarter of a mile long emperor, god emperor, with a human face and little baby arms. Wow. It's a it's wacky. Yeah, think like Jabba the Hutt. And, and he has just, like, no... Make it nightmare. And they actually make it too. a point to address that he has no penis, so it's, like, weird. <laughs> Oh God! Really? Yeah. Like FYI, no like, pee pee. How do you do it? Because he's he like, looks I like a giant pee pee. He's like, hmm. I find it interesting that humans are preoccupied with my genitalia. Genitalia, but no, God Emperor of Dune is literally just like him. His musings. His musings. There's no like plot. Is just. I don't know. It's an afterthought. <laughs> <laughs> it's just. It's, it's just a memoir. <laughs> Not even. It's just him musing on like consciousness and humanity and like the future and the golden path and. That's not spiritual. Um, 
It's something. Mm. It's something. It is something. Mm-hmm. But the movie movie's pretty rad. Like definitely <laughs> like I think <laughs> And uh, I'm so glad the sequel got greenlit. Yes. Yes. And can we just say Timothy Chalamet mm-hmm. was made for that role. He's really good. Hmm. He was made for that role. I agree. He's, he's very, very good in this. I haven't. I don't think I've ever really seen him in anything before, well, but I know the kids love him. Yeah, they do. The girls love him. I mean, and I, I, I think that he is definitely like he is an attractive young man. But th- I don't know under under like a under thirty, they're all just like babies to me. Yeah, it's like I, I have a hard time. <laughs> yeah, that's a. I don't know. Yeah, no, I mean it's how I feel about um, Zendaya. Yeah, she's Be- a beautiful lovely girl. But I but but I feel like she's a baby. When when, when do you start high school? <laughs> she also no. just doesn't age. <laughs> she's just, they're all babies. That's yeah. how I feel about the Timothy Shamley. Yeah. I do. Who was I talking to? I was talking to Sam, who said that he was really hot. Yeah, Sam called him a babe. He's, He's a babe. babe, and I was like, like, "He is okay, a babe. Cradle Robert." I was like, "He is a baby." <laughs> like, <laughs> like yeah. it was. It was. It kind of reminds probably me. Probably our age. <laughs> it, it reminds He's, me of watching like, like the, five. Is it? It's like watching the Harry Potter kids grow up, and people mm-hmm. are like, "Oh, you know, like." Hermione's going to be 18. It's like, they're children. Oh, no. They're children. They're all children to me. I know they're adults now, but in my yeah. head, they're children. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I will say, Rebecca Ferguson, huge crush on her in this movie. Oh, she's gorge. She's awesome. Dude, have you seen Doctor Sleep? No. Oh. I'm sorry. No, you're like the third person we've talked to who hasn't seen it. But Rebecca Ferguson is great in Doctor Sleep. Yes. And she's also great as uh, Jessica. Yes. Jessica. Um, the names. The names are so funny. I love how you have names like, you know, the Muad'Dib and uh, the Kwisat Halarak. And then you have Mentat. Jessica. And then you got, you got <laughs> fucking Paul. <laughs> yeah, Paul's Duncan name. Idaho. It's like, what? <laughs> yeah. Um, the names. The names are hilarious. Jameis. Uh, <laughs> Chani Stilgar. Reverend Mother Gaius Helen Moheim, and then you got Jessica. <laughs> what? <laughs> One of these things is not like the other. <laughs> <laughs> the names are wild. Duncan Idaho, though. And But Larry. Yikes. That's not our joke. I'm just saying, But Larry. Yeah. You should listen to the podcast. You should listen to the uh, the the. I'm not gonna steal their joke. It's a it's it's sure. amazing. But yeah, the um, last podcast. Um, quite quite good i know we we are coming up on the hour mark and uh right around this time i always want to ask uh, if anybody's reading or watching anything that they're enjoying um i'm watching the wheel of time on amazon prime how do you like it i (laughs) i didn't like it at first then like after like episode four and five i was like i really like this now because they introduced like i don't know if you paul mentioned that you read the, the books i have Okay, so they started, it's like episode four and five, they start getting more into the um, Ace to Die and like their warders. And I'm like, I love this. This is like <laughs> my late, my, my, my like little gay boy heart fl- is a flutter, you know? Yeah. This is like, this yeah. is so, like their bond is stronger than family. And I was like, oh. <laughs> it's so great. It's so yeah. great. And that's definitely a book that I will, I need to reread. Um, mm-hmm. I, I, I have like the first three in our mm. shelves, but um, there's like 12. Um, mm. But I remember that was like the Wheel of Time was the first like high fantasy book that mm. I read that I could like really like get into. Because like before that, all I had really known was like, you know, mm-hmm. Tolkien, like Hobbit, that kind of stuff. And then it's like, no. And I could I was like, if it's all like this, I'm, I'm not going to be able to get through it. Mm. And then I read Robert Jordan's Wheel of Time and I was like, oh, this yeah. is great. And if it wasn't yeah. for Wheel of Time, I wouldn't have been willing to like pick up Game of Thrones. Ah. Uh-huh. So Yeah, I really like like I think for me, like the part where I started enjoying is we started getting more it's like the philosophy aspect of it. And I was like, this is actually like really poignant and quite yeah. nice. Um, because I don't know if you went and well, not spoilers, but there's like one where like um they meet like um I don't know if I should go any farther, but like, yeah, basically it's like a basically um, how to value life and the reason why, you know, even though we are reborn, like life is still worth living. And I'm like, yeah. oh, 
I love this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you're enjoying it. And I definitely need to, to, to get into that show and, and check it out. Yeah. Definitely. Uh-huh. Yeah, but like I said, I and they're like they're like super powerful soul bond to their warders was like, yeah. <laughs> Fan fiction mode activate. I know, right? <laughs> oh, I love that. I love that. Show. It's so good. Oh, you are you reading or watching anything? Uh, um, I am. What are we watching? We finished the uh, season five of Big Mouth. Yep, I thoroughly enjoyed that. Uh-huh. Um. We're watching Queen of the Universe. Yeah. It is a reality TV show with singing drag queens. Oh. Um, I'm waiting for new episodes of Dead Files. Uh-huh. That's I, still going. I God bless. Yes, it is. Thank <laughs> God. May that show go on forever. <laughs> forever and ever. I will. Oh, God. I want like 29 seasons. Like, I want it to be my new, like. Uh, I, I want them to keep doing it until they're dead. And then when they <laughs> die, they come back as ghosts and keep <laughs> fucking doing it. <laughs> yes. It's so good. It's so good. And I love it now, like, now that we have, like, the COVID episodes, they don't give any fucks anymore. They swear they like do not care. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's it's amazing. Yeah, it's really, really, really good. Before like Steve Chavez would be like, Are you kidding me? Now he's straight up like, What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, it's great. It's great. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think what else um well I started reading Inferno. Yeah, and I definitely wanted to wait a little bit till at least there was like you know uh, three issues out. I didn't realize there was only four issues, so mm-hmm. um, I'm dying. Episode, uh, yes, definitely because I have. I don't even know if I have thoughts. I just have like <gasps> you know <laughs> emotions. Mm-hmm. Um, it's good. I hate to see Hickman's X Men run come to an end, just because I think it's been so good. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I mean, is Inferno like? It's not like the like end of his run is it or is it just kind of like gearing up for the end um it's the last book that he's writing so we don't know how if he's he might come back at some point or but, but like that's like he's kind of just exiting the you know editorial and just yeah i mean cause letting I guess, the other writers take over yeah because if i remember i feel like he's tackling all the things that he set up mm-hmm. in house of x powers of x like with moira and mm-hmm how long has he been working on this? Since 2019. Dang. Which feels like a lifetime ago just because of COVID. I mean, think mm-hmm. about it. Like, as far as comic book runs go, I mean, I guess it's not that long. Nope. So, but it, it, it fucking feels like it. I think because, too, it's just not a straight up, like, X-Men series. Because there's, like, House mm-hmm. of X, Powers of X, X-Men, and then kind of yeah, all Yeah, that was, these. like, 10 issues. So, yeah. for, like, a whole, so it's like a whole year, basically, of just House right. of X, Powers of X. Yeah. Um, are you reading Trial of Magneto? Uh, not yet. No. Okay. I because I because I know that that that's the other thing too. Sometimes like when they when they do these like little specialized series, it's like trying to understand the order. Because I know Trial of Magneto came after the Hellfire Club Gala. Yes. But then it's like, but where does Inferno kind of fall into all of this? Is kind of. Um, I would probably say it's after all of that. Probably, yeah. You're probably yeah. right. Um. But yeah, but no, it's uh, it is super good, uh, and uh, and as usual, I'm still. I actually took a break from X Men, uh, like because I've been reading all the issues. Like I'm. You're closing the gap now, <laughs> dude. Well, I've read. Get this, I can now say I have read every single issue of the Uncanny X Men because because um, I know they had like they're like Uncanny X Men. It was like the last issue, and then it becomes Wolverine and the X Men, and like the Uncanny mm-hmm. X Men was Cyclops, but. Uh, but yeah, but like the official like Uncanny X Men issue like ends like right after Schism, which is stupid. Jism. Yeah. Oh my god. Well, I sent you the pictures of like the after the aftermath issue of Schism, mm-hmm. where they're mm-hmm. like this weird tribal metaphor. Yeah. <laughs> it was so stupid. It really. They're all cavemen. Oh fucking. Like going their separate ways. That's... Choose pick a side. Oh god. Yeah. Stupid. Uh, king stupid but um but yeah that actually might be one of the reasons why i had to take a, ba- a break from the major x-men stuff i was like Ugh, that was 
got a badge. Because I, st- I, I started reading the first Wolverine the X-Men issue and then just kind of had to take a break. So now I'm reading Peter Parker Spider-Man from the 70s. Cool. And that's a lot of fun. Uh, he just battled a Swarm, which mm-hmm. is uh, uh, a skeleton. of bees. Pretty much. It was so funny that this, it's, like a, it's like a skeleton. Mm-hmm. And they're doing some... I guess it's skeleton like a wizard or some shit, and like they were running some radioactive tests on it, but mm-hmm. unbeknownst to the scientists, there was like still like a queen bee living in the skull, and so the radioactivity made her come back to life and have like a bunch of babies. Oh, so swarm is female. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, I think she's gender fluid, maybe, uh-huh. and now they present themselves. Um, mm. But, uh, but yeah, it was fun. There's a Spider-Man fighting a bunch of bees. Um, and, uh, Song theme. Yeah. Yeah. On brand. I love the wacky villains though, from like the sixties and seventies. There's like also somebody called the mind worm. Huh. And, uh, which kind of reminded me of Dune a little bit. It doesn't even look like a worm, but, um, yeah, it's the mind killer. Yeah. <laughs> I actually really love that. Sorry, I just backtracked, but I love that whole like test scene where it's just like I was like, what is going on? <laughs> so one yeah, thing just, <laughs> one thing I will say about Doom, well, I think one of the reasons why I liked it was because in high school when I was like when I would get super anxious before a test, mm-hmm. that was something that I used to say to myself, like I must Aww. not I, but the sci fi version does like an abbreviated version, which is I must not fear. Fear is the mind killer. I will mm-hmm. face my fear and let it pass through me. Then there will be nothing. Only I will remain. I, oh. I kind of like that version because it's a bit more. There's no inner eye. Oh, you don't want to do the whole fucking thing. You don't want to say the whole script. I like that one. That's like the Wait, reader's that, diet. That was version. a bridge version. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. pretty long. Yeah. yeah, no, it's like like I must not fear. Fear is the mind killer. Fear is the little death that brings total obliteration. I will turn my mm. inner eye and see the it's sunshine. A lot. It's a lot. Mm. Well, I mean, you know, she says it in the movie, but I I like that one because, it's, it, you know, it does Step the back. job. Oh, my God, she's trying to nap. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, on that note, um, thank you, as always, for listening. Uh, please definitely drop us some love on iTunes. Uh, and, yeah, as always, please um, be safe while uh, surfing through the multiverse. Bye.